So now when I hit OK and I start my OK to close and make my decision here, I can now decide to add this film to Arabesque. And what it'll do is it'll look for any remaining effects again on your storyboard to create for you. And then this is going to push in that whole storyboard into Arabesque. And again, it's going to be around one to one, so we're going to push through this ad film process for the purpose of this demo. After you've added your films to Arabesque, the next step would be to physically construct your DVD menu. And that you would do it under the Edit Menu section. Here we're looking at the default of what pops up when you open up the Edit Menu. And we can see the two films that have been added. Here's the short wedding montage and the longer wedding piece. Each one of these projects has been given its own chapter menus inside it. So when you put this DVD, when it's finished, into a DVD player and you bring up your chapter title using your remote control on the DVD player, it'll bring up those thumbnails that we created earlier before we added this film into the partition. Let's work on the DVD main menu now. And you'll see we have a similar listing here that we did when we created our chapter menus. The first one here is actually called control, however. This is a little different. This is actually talking about the control or the behavior of the DVD when it's placed inside a DVD player. There's three options. Menu, trailer only, and trailer plus menu. Menu means it's going to pop up to the main menu as soon as the DVD goes inside the player. So right now, this is what would pop up on the screen. If we set it to trailer plus menu, what that means is whatever film was added first, or whatever has been organized as first in your film list, in this case wedding montage was our first film added, this is going to play right on startup as a trailer, meaning that it's going to play, and when it's done, it's going to pop up to the main DVD menu. However, once the main menu comes up, you will have a thumbnail option to replay this first project again. If you choose trailer only, then what happens is the first project plays on startup when you put your disc in, and when it's done, it comes up to the very main menu, but does not have a thumbnail image on there. The trailer only option will be very useful in cases of maybe having an opening logo or maybe a copyright warning that you put at the very beginning of your production, some kind of short little opening that when that's over, it comes up to the main menu here, but you don't have a thumbnail to play the copyright or the logo again. It's actually right in here to the presentation that you created. We're going to actually leave it set to menu. So what's going to happen is this DVD, when it's finished, will pop up to this very main menu. First thing you'll construct is your background, very similar as before, is that we might want to load in here a scene. And we can choose a background scene that we'd like from one of these projects. We'll look here in the listing here and try one. One thing that you might notice is that when you're creating your DVD backgrounds, if you are using some stills from your scene bin, is that it might be a little difficult if the scene is really light colored to try and see these thumbnail images. So sometimes it's a good idea to select scenes that might have a little bit more of contrast in them. Something that stands out a little more so that you can see your thumbnails on top of the background scene. So here we've loaded in a darker background scene, a nice little silhouette. Now we can see these thumbnail images a little stronger. You do have the option in background on the main DVD menu to actually make this animated. And animated basically means that whatever scene you used in your scene bin, it's going to play the scene in the scene bin and loop it over and over again. You can actually turn on audio too. So if this clip has audio and it plays when this goes into your main DVD menu, these thumbnail stamps will appear here, but the background will play. The looped background can be as long as up to 58 seconds. So if you have a layered scene in your scene bin, you don't want it to go over one minute so that you can have this loop in here over and over again. I'm actually going to choose a different scene in this bin, one that's been layered. We have one here that actually has been named DVD Master, so I know that this is a main DVD background. So we'll let this load in as a background option. And the first thing we're going to do is actually under title on the main DVD menu, I'm actually going to take the main DVD title off. And I can simply hit this backspace key to blank the line. So now there is no title. The title might be something that we've already constructed on the main scene back in the scene bin when you make scene layers. Under stamps, 
The thumbnail stamps here, I'm actually going to turn off. And you can simply take these stamps and shut them off so that you have no stamp icon for each one of them. You'll notice in Arabesque 3 that there's a new option here called Action. This basically means that when you have these two films or these two storyboards, when you hit Start Movie, that basically means when someone uses their remote control on the DVD when it's finished and plays this project, it's going to start playing the whole project. If you have it set to Chapter Menu, basically what that means is this project, when someone hits OK to play it, will go right to that Chapter Menu icon so they can see all the thumbnails created specifically for this project. Each one of these I'm going to have have a different action. On the wedding montage, I'm going to have it set to Start Movie so it just plays. On the main wedding, I'm actually going to have this one go immediately to the chapter menu when someone hits OK to start this. That way they can choose where they want to start playing from. If they want to start at the very beginning, they can play the first thumbnail or choose which thumbnail page they'd like to play from. Under position, I'm going to set the position of these boxes kind of up on the screen here. Under Film Text, this is just again like your chapter menu, as I don't have to have anything in here as an option. I can actually blank these line spaces too. So that if I want to have something on the screen here to wrap around, I can use a title that might have been layered into a scene. Right now I can't actually see what's going on, because I'm actually looking at the first frame of this scene back in the scene bin. So I'm going to come back out of here and go into my Project Settings and make sure I have the correct project selected that I want to pull an animated video scene from. Down here in the edit menu of this project I see I have a clip named DVD Master. I can play it to check it here and you can see that this is a layered scene. It's got some masks, some cross dissolves, a layered title using our scene button. And this is going to be the scene that's going to play back over and over again in our DVD menu when it comes up to the main menu screen. I'm actually going to add an additional title to this clip that's already been prepared here. This title has been laid on to have two options up here and we're going to use as selectable options when we make our DVD menu. And to take this title and put it onto this scene, I'm going to click on the Scene Layering button found here in Titling with Effect selected because the effect lasts the whole length of the scene and hit OK. And now I have a new scene in the scene bin called Pages that I'm going to use as my DVD menu. I can now return back to Finish, Start Program, and back into Edit Menu. And now under Background, I'm going to select that new scene that I created called Pages. And now what I can do is I can come in here to my Stamps, and instead of having this stamp, which would be a still scene of whatever scene we loaded in here on the stamp, and of course you could always use the From Scene or From Background to make it see through or select a clip that you wanted to load in as a particular still. Instead of doing this, I'm actually going to make it set for no stamp. And I'm going to have this stamp position right over on top of this highlight section. So that's what's the montage here, it's actually some highlights. The other stamp I need to get out of there, but I'm going to move over here to the ceremony. So you can see I'm kind of rearranging a little bit these thumbnail stamps. Just as another note, if you wanted to actually have this be an animated stamp, so we actually have some moving picture-in-picture -picture information in here, I recommend that you check out our Tips and Tricks series. Our Tips and Tricks number 2 DVD actually shows you how to create animated PIPs for your main DVD menu. But for now we're going to stick to just doing a simple one here. I'm just going to make a couple of choices here. This one I'm going to come in and give a name. And I'm actually going to cheat here. I'm not actually needing this name, but I'm extending the size of the box so that this stamp can position nicely over each one of these, these titles. Now when I go into Film Texts, I, if I'm happy with the size of this box, I'll probably just leave that alone for its size, but under Film Text Attributes, I'm going to select the text, and I'm going to select these color to be completely transparent. Same thing with the border and shadow.